and Hall Stewart. I was, you know, when I turned 30, I began to get ill and I floundered around for a few years. I didn't even know what was wrong with me. I went to a whole medical merry-go-round and my health, meanwhile, deteriorated further. And actually, in the end, I was so bad that I actually was bed bound nearly all of the day and I could hardly even speak. My function was just diminishing. And eventually, I happened upon a doctor who suggested to get measured for heavy metals. And he was the first person to have anything uh, incisive to add. And I ended up being diagnosed with massively high levels of mercury in my body. Mm. So again, we didn't really know where to look. And in the end, I'd heard about Gerson because I'd read an article in the paper about a guy who'd cured himself from hepatitis C, which impressed me because I thought, wow, can you, can you cure that? So that impressed me and I read the, the basic theory behind it. It made sense to me. And I was already switched on to nutrition and all the rest, but I knew I was in a situation where I needed massive intervention. I was extremely bad. And so we decided to take a chance and try the Gerson therapy. Contacted them in California, and they put us on to Stephen Gamble. So I was obviously living in Ireland, and we liaised by email and phone. So he started with the therapy, and full force, 10 juices, four coffee enemas a day, and really, it was so slow. And for other people looking at all, it's not very spectacular. You hear about people maybe with cancer and after three months their tumour had shriveled, but it wasn't like that for me. I mean, I was so bad. I was almost a vegetable. So, but the other thing is that the first time I took a coffee enema, I knew I was onto something because my body was almost like, what took you so long? I mean, I'd say my liver at that stage was in a terrible state. So it was a massive relief. And just the idea that I was so up to my eyes and stuff. And by the time I got a chance to, to get some release, I knew instinctively, yeah, this is going to work. So I kept out. Uh, just, you know, my mother helped me. And just day in, day out, it's a grind. You know, for me, it didn't really matter. I've heard people saying, oh, it's a terrible loss of quality of life in the garrison. But I wasn't going anywhere. I couldn't go out and have a few beers or go to the cinema. I was already stuck in bed. So I had nothing to lose from that point of view. So I kept grinding along doing it, and bit by bit, really, it was 18 months before I actually could get out of the bed, even though all that time I knew I was detoxifying. And the stuff was so toxic that sometimes even when I was taking coffee enema, there'd be stuff almost like coming out of my skin, like it was really acrid and toxic. And, uh, you know, I just kept doing it, and I stuck at the full garrison for the full two years, and bit by bit, my functionality was just being restored. So I could then I could, I know it sounds crazy, but I couldn't even talk for very long at the beginning. And I could actually talk for 20 minutes a day, 25 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day. Uh, where do you think all this heavy metal poisoning, what was the cause of all of that? Where did all that come from? I mean, do you... In my case, it was actually fillings in my teeth. I had a lot of them, I had 14. But that's not, I mean, people have them, it doesn't really cause them a problem. It really depends on your own genetic ability to clear stuff. Some people have a great ability to clear toxins. Some people may be middling. I'm at the end, but I really have to watch it. So in my case, I think the stuff is just stockpiling for years, and I wasn't clearing it. So they, you know, they leak. It's well known they do leak, but if you're able to clear it, I guess it doesn't cause a, a critical problem. So I need to get them out. That was the thing, like, you want to turn the taps off as well. So I did eventually get them out with the, you know, our dentist dedicated that do not use mercury. And that took a few months to get them all out because my health wasn't good and you can only take out about two or three at a time. Eventually we got them all out. But I still had the legacy problem of clearing the mercury. And uh, even though I did like, the full garrison for two years, after that I was able to just pull back and just, you know, my life was coming together. I was starting to... Uh, you know, rebuild my life and still have to keep the, the detoxification going and really it actually took me about 10 years to really get the whole lot out because even though your desperation wants you to get it out quickly it just is very slow to get it out of the cells and it's quite harsh on the body harsh on the liver so you just have to go with the rate you can go at yeah absolutely and so um you know this did you self-administer this diet yourself is it something or did you have Stephen Gamble used to give me a little sort of a, a matrix and he had, had, had me 
you know, you would actually give me a bit of a schedule and I would stick to the diet. It was really just the, the strict girls' diet. It was soups, salads, juices, all organic vegetables, as much raw as you could take, really no meat at all. And, you know, you're just carbon bombing your body with nutrition and at the other end you're taking all the bad stuff out. But in particular, trying to get heavy metals out of your body is like decommissioning a nuclear bomb with a broken screwdriver, your arm behind your back in an earthquake. It's very, very difficult and it's very slow, but it can be done. And that's why I'm here. I mean, just socially, I lost my job, I lost my marriage, I lost my house. When my life just totally imploded, I had a, a young boy and that was, I, I went through divorce, although frankly it was a lot, but I could hardly even, you know, engage with it because I was so ill. And I was even in danger of losing custody of my, my boy. And bit by bit, I, I just rebuilt my life. So it really was like a blast when I was in. And then, <laughs> thankfully I've rebuilt it all. Mm -hmm. But it was a slow and torturous process. I'm I'm ninety five percent back to where I was. I know I will get the full one hundred percent, but there's just a tiny bit left to go, and I know it will come. I'm confident about that. But I do very much follow the principles of Garrison. I eat a very good diet, and I don't drink. I don't smoke. You know, I I yeah. Sometimes I go out for meals with friends. That's about it. But I'm pretty strict, and I I don't really miss drinking because, you know, what I've gained is so huge. It's a small price to pay for a few beers, whatever, I don't care. And also psychologically, I would say I'm a completely different person because it really showed me, no pun intended, that the metal I have inside of me, you know, the steel that when you really have to dig, it's really there. Uh, I, you do see like what's real in life, what matters. I actually, you know, the, the great thing is I have joint custody of my son. I got remarried again to a great woman. We bought a house. It's all been very positive. I've totally rebuilt my life. I feel from the ashes. And I, I just didn't think, given where I was, that that was possible. So it, it is a good story. Mm. And, you know, I, I can't believe that that actually happened. But it was down to just the therapy that enabled me, and, and Stephen Gamble in particular, to mm. go through that journey. But it's, it's not something many people would have ever traveled. Mm. And really, even people with cancer, you know, I was so ill, I felt so peculiar, so severely ill. I've heard people with cancer sometimes actually feel okay, even when they're diagnosed. They don't they actually feel fine and they're told that they've got a, a tumour, but by God, I knew I was ill. And it was just a very gradual, you know, come back from there. Well, Charlotte Gerst, I'm thankful for keeping the therapy going. And Stephen and Melanie were fantastic support. And really my family, like, it's, it's not cheap. It's a very expensive therapy, and I can understand how not everybody could do it. And, we, you know, we had people helping us, voluntary. It was unbelievable the good that came out of it. But I have to say, thank God that, that there was a way out for me. And even though some people would think it's a very uncompromising therapy, it really made sense to me. I knew I needed massive intervention, like not just, you know, a good, like a bowl of soup here or, a, you know, a juice. I needed something really spectacular because I was in seriously dire straits.